Thank you. This world spends billions of dollars <laughs> seeking to know the future. They, they want to know the future so bad. They've done so poor with the present, you'd think they'd leave the future alone, wouldn't you? But there are more witches and fortune tellers in Washington, D.C. per square inch than there is anywhere else in the world. They always gravitate to where there's money because they charge for their services. But you and I do not need witches and soothsayers and uh, fortune tellers. We have the Word of God. And the Bible says the Word of God is sure. Uh, what somebody else tells you may not be sure at all, but the Word of God is sure. How many glad we're with the Word of God? It is sure. Uh, we have been studying for a number of weeks uh, the dispensations of God. Uh, a dispensation is merely a period of time in which God deals with his people in a certain way, under certain laws and commandments and so forth. And we have completed six of these. And one of the fascinating things about the Bible is that the Apostle Peter, under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, said, A day with the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is a day. And in that same area, it was talking about Noah as a thousand years is a day, and also creation. So if God created Monday and Tuesday, he came to a point of tremendous judgment. It was a time when Noah created the ark, and the people of the earth died. Then you have Wednesday and Thursday, and you come to another awful time in history. The Son of God became the Son of Man to become the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. What a day it was. Then we have two other days. That's Friday and Saturday. And that's two more thousand years. We have come to the Saturday night of human history. We have come to that period of time when, uh, when all things are going to be fulfilled. And among them is the kingdom age. So if you look back at page 46 and 47 in your teaching syllabi, uh, we have the dispensation of the millennial reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. This day is the seventh day in which God rested. So we have a thousand years as a time period. This time period is from what we call the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, or his appearing to fight with the Antichrist and have the battle of Armageddon, which will climax man's rebellion against God. And then the millennium begins. And that thousand years stretches through to the, the last resurrection, which is the resurrection of the wicked. The wicked dead will not be risen at the same time as the righteous dead. They're 1,000 years apart. The righteous dead at the coming of the Lord the first time in his rapture, the second time in his revelation. But in his rapture, he takes his saints to be with him for the marriage supper of the Lamb and for giving to them their duties during the, the thousand year reign of Christ. And then the final resurrection would be the resurrection of the wicked. There'd be no Christians there. No believers there, no godly people there. But from Cain to the Antichrist will be the unrighteous. You say, why would God do that? Well, for the simple reason that most people don't think they're wrong. If you went down to the local jail today and talked to the people in there, you would discover everybody thinks he's all right in there and that he's been mistreated and that he shouldn't be there. There are millions of people in hell right now who don't think they should be there. 
They said, I shouldn't be here. And so there has to be this mighty judgment called the, called the white throne judgment. When Christ shall sit upon the throne, the Bible says the books will be opened relative to, to uh, every thought and every deed. And then that person will stand there and Jesus will read to him all that is done. Then he says, do you think you're guilty? And every one of them will say, yes, indeed, I am guilty. Now, in our area here, if you do something wrong, they put you in the jail. They keep you there for a short time. They have a court session. Then they put you into the penitentiary. That's the way it is also spiritually. If a man dies today, he goes to hell. The Bible says the rich man lifted up his eyes in hell, being in torment. But that was not his final place. He will appear at the great white throne judgment and Jesus will show him his life of how wicked he was to let a man die at his gate when inside they were eating sumptuously. Even their hogs were so fat they couldn't wiggle. But he wouldn't give a man at his gate a crumb of bread and, and he will be shown that, the wickedness of his heart. You see, yes, that was wicked, then you belong here. So they put him into the lake of fire, which is a, the final place of the wicked dead. But our study at this moment is related to the uh, 1,000 years of Christ as King of Kings and Lord of Lords on, on planet Earth. There'll be two kinds of people here. There will be the redeemed of the Lord who will, uh, who will uh, have immortal bodies at that time. They will move around like Jesus did after his resurrection. Then there will be a natural race of people on the face of the earth that during the thousand years, multiplied millions of people will be born and they will be born naturally. They will not sin for the simple reason the devil is locked up in, in the bottomless pit and there is no temptation to sin. So after the thousand years, Satan will be released for a short period, the Bible says. And those that are born only during the time of the millennial reign of Christ, they will have an opportunity to say whether they want to be a lover of Jesus or not. You say, why? No one goes to heaven unless he wants to go. You, you, you don't go to heaven by accident. You don't go to heaven just because you live in a community where people love God. You go to heaven by a decision you make. I now receive the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. And I now renounce the blood of Adam, full of corruption and sin and rebellion. And I turn to the blood of the cross of Jesus. And I become a born again person. And from this moment, I don't follow Adam's nature, I follow the Jesus nature. And that's why people go to heaven. Now, in your syllabus here on page 47, it begins in Revelation 20 and 1. It says, and I saw an angel come from heaven having the, the key. Notice it says the key. There's only one. The key of the bottomless pit. I see this is something you can't see with your natural eye. But we enter into the new world of, of, uh, of, being, of being not only translated, but of immortality, that we have a, an immortal body. We'll see things like this that our natural eye would never see. Uh, he had the key to the bottom of his pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon. Uh, now, God really wants you to know who this is. He is the dragon, and uh, people worship the dragon. Uh, you, millions of people worship serpents. They, they worship the dragon. That dragon is the old serpent because he was in the Garden of Eden and deceived Eve. And he is called the devil, and he is called Satan. Brother, that's enough names for you to catch on who he's talking about. You don't make any mistake there, you see. 
and, and, and Satan and bound him a thousand years. Now, so you, now you've got a time limit there. That means only during the millennial kingdom was he, was he bound. And then in verse 3, and cast him into the bottomless pit, shut him up, and set a seal on him that he should not deceive the nations no more until the 1,000 years should be fulfilled. And after that, he may be loosed a little season only for those that were born and had never been tempted and never told that God wasn't honest and truthful and loving, you see. They'll have to make a decision on that. And I saw thrones and, and they that sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, of which had not worshiped the beast, uh, neither his image, uh, neither had, had, had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So those are what you might call the great tribulation saints that, that they overcame. They just refused to go along and they were martyred. And he says, they shall rule and reign with Christ for this thousand years. Now the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. I'm glad that verse five's in there, you know, so that you'll know that I was telling you the truth while ago. Uh, which is the first resurrection. And blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. Uh, that's when the trump of God shall sound, the dead in Christ shall rise. We that are ready to remain shall be caught up together to be with the Lord with the, in the air and shall forever be with the Lord. On the, on the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. It keeps saying 1,000 years, showing you that he's, term, he's finalizing and finishing that period of time in which he created the earth, seven days. Now he's come to that rest period, and he's confining it to that one day of time, for a day is with the Lord as a 1,000 years and a 1,000 years as a day. And, and so they, they, uh, uh, they're, they're holding it right to that number. After that, eternity will begin. And that's going to be very exciting. Now, we call this the kingdom age, as we have been reading to you from chapter 20. And the kingdom age uh, is they have a king. His name is Jesus. And that he shall rule, having a kingdom, a people that he rules over, and he shall rule for 1,000 years. Now, if you turn on page uh, uh, 48, it says that... Uh, This is a dispensation uh, that was prophesied before it came about. In, in Isaiah 11 and 1, it says, And there came forth out of, the, uh, out, out, out of the rod and out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall be upon him, and the Spirit of wisdom shall be upon him, and the spirit of understanding shall be within him, and the spirit of counsel shall be in him, and the spirit of might. You ought to study those, those graphic words of the abilities of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's uh, astounding beyond anything that man has ever conceived. And, and uh, of might, and a spirit of knowledge, and the fear of of the Lord, and the word fear there is a very poor translation. Uh, you could say respect of the Lord, or you could say uh, 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 obey, obedience un unto the Lord, but it doesn't, it's not related to the word fear that brings terror. Uh, that we're not working in that area at all. And shall make of him, uh, and shall make him of living quick understanding and the fear of the Lord and he shall judge after the after the sight 
of, the, of his eye. He shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove them uh, with, uh, with equity uh, for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the branch of his lips, with the breath of his lips, uh, shall he stay the wicked. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins and, and faithfulness. Why don't you put a little circle around that thing? Isn't that amazing? You, you think you don't have to be faithful. Look what it says about Jesus here. And the faithfulness of the girdle of his reins. And then it says what will happen to conditions on the earth at that time. Uh, verse 6. And the wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. That means a wolf will not kill any longer. That another and new nature will be given to 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 wild animals. And a wolf shall lie with the lamb, and a leopard shall lie down with the kid. And the calf and the young lion uh, and the fattening together, and a little child shall lead them. So we're going to have a, during the millennial kingdom, now this is a prophecy that Isaiah gave, uh, in the millennial kingdom, all of nature will be changed. It will not be the same. Go, go a little further with it. And it says, And the cow and the bear shall feed together, and their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like an ox, and the suckling shall play in the hole of the asp. Even snakes will not bite any longer. Isn't that something? If the asp... And it says, and the weaned child shall put his hand in the cockatrice den, a deadly, a deadly serpent. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all the holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord. Uh, you won't have to go to school for an education at that time. The whole earth will be full of heaven's knowledge. It'll be an intuitive knowledge. You'll know that you know, you're sure that you're sure. It'll be a knowledge that God will plant within the mind and the spirit of man that it shall flow out of him. It will be, not be a knowledge that you pick up day by day by experience. It'll be a, the gift of God into your heart and into your life. And it says, uh, the earth man shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, just like the waters cover the sea. And in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. And it shall be, and to it shall the nations seek, and the rest shall be glorious. Rest don't mean something following here. It means <laughs> peaceful. Lie down to rest. And then so here we have, the Jews could, 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 could read this 2,000 years ago, you know, and they did read Isaiah. They were, Isaiah was their orator that spoke so eloquently. They did, they did read him. But here they had the picture of what was going to be that was spoken just over 700 years before Christ was born. It, prophecy is a most amazing, amazing, amazing thing. When God pulls the veil and let you see out there, a way out there in front of you. And so the millennial reign of the millennial kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, he is a king. He will rule upon this earth 1,000 years. Another good scripture for you to read is Daniel chapter 7, beginning over about verse 13. And in the New Testament, Ephesians 5, verse 5. And, and at that time, the whole world will be at peace. The the planet Earth. And the, and the cause of all trouble, the devil, is already bound. He's tied up. He's sealed in the bottomless pit for a thousand years. And God is going to show man how this world, this is so important. God is going to show man 
how this world should have been run from the beginning, what God had in mind about it. And the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the second Adam, the Bible says, he is going to be the one to rule and to reign for this 1,000 years. So we'll know him, we'll work under him, he will give us all of our orders, he will tell us just where to be and just what to do. And, and uh, we, the bride of Christ, will rule over this world. It's going to be a difference from what's around today, you know. That this world is so polluted with greed, greed, demonized greed, to no official seems to be, to be full. He just wants more and more and more and more and more and more. And finally, the, they catch a few of them and put them in prison for a few days and so forth. But, but the greed that the devil has put into this world and, and, but God will show man how through the Lord Jesus Christ we should live. Man will no longer have any needs because every person will have plenty, plenty, plenty on the face of the earth. Everyone will. The, the sin of lusting for wealth will be gone. Every man shall work with his neighbors and friends. And the earth will be a place of total happiness with no reason for sorrows and so forth. And the glorious church will be the helpers of the Lord Jesus Christ and to carry out his will on the face of the earth. How many are going to enjoy that? Glory be to God. Anybody like to be the mayor of South Bend? Well, nobody. Well, we'll find somebody else besides you then. Somebody got to take over. <laughs> and uh, we are, we are, we're looking forward to that. Now, sinners uh, have not ruled well upon this earth with justice, of course. And Jesus and his saints are going to show the world, or show all of heaven, just how it should have been done. Some will miss the thousand years of peace. As I told you, the wicked dead will not be anywhere around. They'll still be in that first place called hell. And they do not rise again until the end of this 1,000 years. And then it says in Revelation 11, 17, that heaven rejoices for this kingdom. Heaven does. To see the fulfillment of what God had in mind when he created our planet Earth. And in Romans, I mean in Revelation 12 and 10, also, we see that the word of God finally, totally comes to pass and that you and I are part of the picture. <laughs> We're not on the sidelines. We're part of the picture. We're part of the story. Only fear and unbelief and sin can keep us from being part of it. And we're not going to tolerate that. We're going to live for the Lord, love the Lord, serve the Lord, and have our part in ruling a thousand years upon this earth. There'll be no jailhouses because there'll be no breaking of the law. Man will have a new nature. He won't want to do that. There'll be no prostitutes because nobody wants to be one. This world will be a holy place in which to live. What a wonderful thing to look forward to. Now, if the rest of prophecy has come to pass, this piece is going to come to pass too. It'll all be fulfilled together. And you and I on the right, on the right track. And the closer we are to the Lord, we hit that word faithfulness while ago, and it, it, just, it just hit me in the middle here. Some of us are just not faithful, and we know that. Maybe another word for that is not committed. You just part committed. Just not committed. If there was ever a time when we need to tighten the screws, tighten the bolts, get everybody, everything solid, and run with, the Bible says, run with patience this race. It's right now. Say something in a hurry. Millions of people around the world are going to wish they could get in. They're not going to make it. They haven't been totally faithful to the master. They've lived by their feelings, just wishy-washy-washy-wishy. 
If you're going to live by your feelings, I feel this way, I feel that way, I feel the other way, you will miss God every time. We just don't live by how we feel. We live by what's right. What's right. Many times when I have to make a decision, I, I just stop for a moment and I said, uh, Lord, what would you do if you had to make this decision? And it gets a lot easier then, you know. It gets a lot easier when we say we know now what the Lord would do. And what we want to do is what the Lord wants done. Can you say amen? amen. Yes, let us do it in Jesus' name because there will be this finality of those seven days. But we do have some more in our teaching syllabus here. And that is the, the time of the great white throne judgment. I just felt like we ought to get into that. That's where every sinner has to appear before God. In our next lesson, uh, that's what we will have. And then the time of the new Jerusalem. I don't think we should leave <laughs> that judgment. We ought to bring you on through to shouting. So we're going to come on through to the new Jerusalem of what it's going to be like beyond the thousand years, you see. And, and, and I know you. And that will be the finality of this of this teaching syllabus, and we'll go to something else. Give the Lord a hand, everybody. <laughs> Hallelujah.